for all idioms that are considered, considered the hallmarks of American culture. But for our ethnicity, African Americans, they are the lies that America has told us. How can you write these words in the midst of slavery? How can you write these words and lynch your people for something as simple as unintentional eye contact with someone of another persuasion? How can you write these words when you told our people to sit in the back of the bus? How can you write these words when you sprayed our people with fire hoses? How, America, can you declare a more perfect union when a young black man has been murdered and his killer lost free? How? I've got some questions, America, and I stand here tonight to tell you that you have lied to us. You have perpetuated a lie. Let me be clear tonight. I'm not running for office. So no muzzle will be put on me. But I stand here tonight as a prophet of the Most High God, as a priest of the Order of Melchizedek. And I want to tell you tonight that you have perpetuated a lie. I want to let you know tonight that I don't stand alone. I'm standing with my brothers and sisters who have committed to stand on the wall, to cry loud and spare not to blow the trumpet in Zion because all of us can make this great claim that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So I want you to know I don't stand alone tonight. Some 149 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, some 58 years after Brown versus the Board of Education, some 55 years after the desegregation of Little Rock, some 48 years after the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and some 44 years after the death of a man who had a dream that one day his four little children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. All these years later, we are waiting for America to come clean. Emmett Till, Rodney King, Troy Davis, and now Trayvon Martin and countless others who have never gained name recognition every single day in between. Tonight, my brothers and sisters, do you see the pattern and the presence of this metastatic, cancerous, racial epidemic among our people from generation to generation? Something is wrong. When a young man can't walk down the street in 2012, in the land of the free. When he can't taste the rainbow and sip on an Arizona iced tea without being at risk in what is supposed to be a more perfect union. Something is wrong. Sounds like a modern day lynching to me. There is still some strange fruit hanging from some modern day proverbial lynching trees. It is time for America to come clean. Yeah. But not only is it time for America to come clean, it's also time, my brothers and sisters, for the church to stand up. And so I'm here today as a young cleric to appeal to the church, the beautiful body of Christ. I appeal because our great church has become so disconnected. Somehow we've forgotten that only 50 years ago, our mothers and fathers had to ride in the back of the bus. Right. We, we forgot that our forefathers uh, picked cotton 18 hours a day. We, we forgot that the transatlantic slave trade, slavery on American soil, 
and the civil rights movement are the pillars on which our faith in God was built and strengthened. Yeah. We, we as church don't want to contribute to this imperfect union, do we? No. But might I tell you today that the bride of Christ has contracted a modern day leprosy. My, my, my. We become leprous, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Leprosy leads to numbness, uh, and sometimes uh, the leper can't feel that an injury has been sustained. Right. Yeah. So no longer does the bride use her appendages to mobilize a greater cause, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, yeah. and to speak truth to power. Yeah. Instead, a single-eyed focus on postmodernity, prosperity gospel, mega church edifices, right. and the episcopacy has infected her. Yeah. She has become as a leper. The church is numb and has sustained injury, but does not know it. But you, the kids, have come tonight to wake you from your sleep. Yeah. Get up tonight. Yeah. Ministry in these postmodern times is not solely about shouting the people about promises that we as the clergy never help them to see or achieve. It's also about raising social consciousness of the people of God. Although he ignored the racial tensions of his day and may have been just as guilty as those whom he referred to in his statement, Walter Rosh and Bush had this much right. He said, whoever uncouples the religious and the social life has not understood Jesus. So people of God, I want to know tonight, do you all understand Jesus? Yeah. My, my, my. The one who tells us through his prophets to learn to do good, yeah. to seek justice and correct oppression, to bring justice to the fatherless and to plead the widow's cause. This king, this king. whose salvific sacrifice we celebrate this week, who says, what does the Lord require of you right. but that you do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. This sovereign savior who says woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees uh, and the writers who keep writing oppression uh, to turn aside from the needy justice uh, and to rob the poor of my people of their right. Do we understand Jesus tonight? Yeah. We cannot move uh, into our tomorrow singing, shouting, and laying prostrate in our mega churches, all the while missing Jesus. Wow. We missed him for three weeks after Trayvon was killed. We sang, we shouted, we gave offering, we heard a sermon, we received a benediction, and did not mobilize our community while social organizations took their stand. No longer, my brothers and sisters, can the church sit in deafening silence while the blood of our young men and women cries from the ground. When we take the hoodies off. No longer can we make noise for two weeks and then go back to business as usual. The new Jim Crow is in full effect. He's taken off his white sheet, but he still reigns in courtrooms and in the criminal justice system of this land of the free and this home of the brave. He no longer Wears a, wears a white sheet and burns a cross. No. But now he prints bumper stickers that say, don't renege in 2012. Right, right. And unless we pursue him ravenously, voraciously, and ferociously as a roaring lion after its prey, yeah. this place called America will never truly be a place with liberty yeah. and justice for all. So today, we pursue as a lion. Yeah. Today, I give God all of me. I realize that a black president has only pissed off the perpetrator. Right. I realize that Mr. Obama's election does not even begin to crack the door of the stony sarcophagus where our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness lay buried. Yeah. But there is hope tonight. Yeah. I said there is hope tonight. You're looking at hope. Yeah. We, we, as these young clergy, say that not with piety, but we say that tonight because we unite ourselves to give ourselves away. Yeah. I use the words of the late Reverend.
Reverend Martin King with reverence and humility. I dare not use his words without truly understanding his work. He said change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. And so if we have to struggle, struggle we will. But we do so with straight back. Yeah. This generation will not rise to the pastoral seat without the social ills of our flocks in mind. Yeah. We will not rise with a political insensitivity. And so we give our, ourselves away tonight to practical steps forward. No, we will not stop here. We give ourselves away tonight to translate our righteous indignation into an existence that is best in rebuking the status quo. Yeah. Yes. We give God all of us tonight to honor in true community. Yeah. Yeah. We give God all of us tonight yeah. Yeah. to healing our neighborhoods and communities. Yeah. And I give God all of me tonight to pushing my colleagues to stay sensitive to a purpose that is higher than I. Because I still believe, still believe in a time when one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Because I still believe that we can live in a time when justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. What about you tonight? Do you believe with us? Walk together, children. And don't you get weary. Because there's a great camp meeting in the promised land. Yeah. We give God all of us tonight. Tonight we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As young adult clergy standing before these pastors, before these city officials, before all of you who we are accountable to, we give ourselves away tonight. Yeah. And we say, yes. yes. Yes, Lord. 